Hello, welcome to our introduction to the role-playing game RPG. You've already played it a little bit because you've gone into the virtual space, the 3D space that we run currently on Open Wonderland. And you've practiced that, you have your avatar, you have your groups, you've even seen some of the different places we have, like the classrooms. But now we're going to play a little bit different inside of there and we're going to have more specific goals. And these goals are going to be tightly related to, tied to negotiation and your kind of company, your simulated company, which is your group. So the way this works is, just like always, you're going to go and open one and But before you do, there's a few things you need to understand. And they're related to your goal package, your strategy, your negotiation. Uh, the way this works is, before class begins, I'm going to send you an email. And in that email, you're going to have a product. That product will have some information about it. Inside of our class, we'll have some buyers and some sellers. So you may be a buyer, you may be a seller. And every week, that can change to be different. You may be a seller this week and a buyer next week. And the products will change also. We'll begin with one product, but later as the simulations go on, we will have more than one product. And you can choose which one you want to buy or which one you want to sell. In any case, this video today is to get you introduced to the actual scoring system of the RPG for negotiation we're going to be using. So you can check the link that you've been emailed or given inside of the out course outline. And there's an Excel sheet that has one page for seller and one page for buyer. So I want you to open up that Excel sheet and maybe follow along with me or maybe just watch this video first and then try things out because I need you to take up your whole screen sometimes to get a good clear look at what I'm talking about inside this page. Uh, hopefully we can you know, make it a little bit larger on your screen, enlarge your, your video so you can see it clearly. Otherwise, the type can get very, very small. Well, let's begin with the seller. In this Excel sheet, we have a buyer sheet and an Exceller sheet in the tabs down on the lower left-hand side there. We're going to begin by looking at the seller. That is your company, your group. You are selling a product you have manufactured. So basically, you're the manufacturer you're going to sell. Let's begin up here in the left side of the page. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And here you see we are a seller, right? Definitely the seller. And this is our RPG. And this will be game one. I can click there and choose a different different game if I need to. Let me just go ahead and demo that for you now. So I go ahead and I move my mouse and I click on that square there. There's a drop down menu and in the drop down menu RPG 0, RPG 1, RPG 2. Our first RPG is going to be 0. So I'm going to go ahead and pretend I'm 0. Now if I zoom in again you can see that's exactly what I've done. I've chosen RPG Zero. So in this page, on this Excel sheet, there's a lot of these drop-down menus and radio buttons. Let's begin over here, product service. So this is the product you have to sell. Remember, you are the seller, so you're going to have to sell it. I'm going to email it to you and it'll have a product description. Inside that product description, I'm going to give you the base price. Let's say the base price is 1000 So I go ahead and I type 1000 here. I'm also going to give you the base units. That is, how many units you have to sell. Let's say 10,000 units to sell. The base price is 1000 meaning that your resistance point is something like that. But that's not all because we're going to change that in one moment. What we do is then we come over to the right side a little bit and you see this thing here, which is this roll. What does roll mean? It means roll the dice. We're using dice. That is a six-sided dice, one to six. So basically, we're generating a random number, one to six. Now, I used to play this using real dice, but we don't do that anymore. We have a Google Sheet 
that we use just before class begins. Each group has a, a, a Google Sheet and you'll press a button and that'll roll the dice for you. I'll email you more details. But satisfy it to, satisfice it to say right now we have six and one random number will be chosen. So let's say I rolled a three. So I would click the three right here. This would be the third one down. I click that. And what this does is it changes the base price to be the resistance price. So in the email I received it was 1000 base price but now the price becomes 960. You see? What does that mean? As the seller that means I cannot go below 960. That is my resistance point. That is my resistance point for this price. Now I do the same thing for the base units. Let's say I rolled a 5 and that will change my base units to be what's called mod units and mod units means how many products am I looking to sell. And my factory it looks like can produce 10,500. So you see right here I have the mod units. The mod units being how many I'm going to actually try to sell. And then we have one more score we need to roll for and that is just one to six right here. One to six right here and you just put that number directly in here. Type it directly in. I rolled a three. That's called your flex points. Now flex points we'll learn a little bit about a bit later and just suffice to say right now flex points give you uh, opportunity to change things a little bit, to be flexible, thus they're called flex points. Okay, so you just take your mouse, you click in there, and you change these things and they come out fairly automatically. The next part we look at is what's called the importance. Again, it's one to six, you see? So if I roll one, or if I roll two, or if I roll three, then I just go ahead and input that directly into there and that will tell me is it vital importance 6 which means really super important or is it not important 1 which I call small potatoes here. Let me zoom into that one more time give you another look. Right? It's pretty straightforward. Here I've rolled a three, so I went ahead and clicked three. The importance comes out to be three, which is somewhat important. Why does this all matter? You will soon see why this all matters. Stay patient and you will see. Okay, so very quickly, just to review this very first part we've done here. We started out with a base price. We changed that to a resistance price. We started out with base units. We changed that to mod units. The resistance price means what? If I am the seller, which I am, up here I'm the seller, I cannot sell for less than that. I must sell for more than that price. Mod units, that's how many I am going to produce and sell. My boss told me so, so I need to try to sell that many. If I sell less than that, I am not successful. My flex points gives me flexibility. More flex points are better, less flex points is worse. I've also go ahead and decide the importance of the ne negotiation. My boss told me so. Maybe if it's very important, like five, this means if I don't succeed, I might be in trouble. Or maybe it's six, vital, I might be fired. Or maybe nobody really cares, this is not important. Maybe the relationship is important, so maybe it's small potatoes, one. So those are the things we've done so far. Now we're gonna move on to something that's quite easy to understand, and that would be here, quality. Now the quality again is going to be decided by the dice roll. How do we do the dice roll? We go ahead and we roll the dice one, two, six. And when we roll that dice, what we end up getting is either a low, average, or high quality. Now since I am the seller, what this means is if I try to sell what am I able to produce? Remember, seller is also the producer, right? Well, this means that if I roll uh, one, the quality I can actually produce is low. If I roll two, then it's also low. 
If I roll three or four, then it's average. And if I roll five or six, then it is high. So quickly, just to emphasize, remember, if you roll one to two, that means low. If you roll three to four, as in here, circle that for you, three to four, that means your company can produce average. And if you roll five to six, then that means your company can produce high. You can sell high quality. Of course, if your company can sell high, you could also sell average or even sell low. But if your company makes average, it's very difficult for you to sell high, right? So this is where things kind of limit you. If you're able to sell low quality, you're going to have to find buyers that it can accept low quality. Or you're going to have to use some flex points, which we'll talk about in a minute. So let's go ahead on to the next part, which again, pretty obvious. We've talked about the quality. Now we're gonna talk about the delivery, or this would be the channel you kind of send it into, right? So how quickly can you deliver? Well, if your company is very efficient because you roll a five or a six here, five or six, then that would mean that your delivery can be fast. If on the other hand, you roll on the dice a one or a two, then that means your delivery speed is uh, low. Now this is what your company is capable of. And again, same idea. If you actually roll a one or a two, then you just click this here and your delivery will be one. So in my case, I've got, I rolled one to two, I have a low or inefficient, less efficient, I should, should say, delivery. That means when I find a buyer, I'm going to have to find a buyer who can accept that slower speed. Okay, so that seems pretty straightforward to understand. We've got quality and we've got delivery. Please just remember, when you roll the dice, it's one to two equals low, three to four equals average, five to six equals high. And the same for delivery. One to two is low, three to four is average, five to six is fast. I guess I should make that slow. Anyway, so now we've kind of covered a few things already, right? We have our products and service up here and we roll our dice to get our resistance and mod units and we roll the dice to get flex points. We then roll the dice to get our importance of this negotiation. Okay, then we roll the dice one more time to get your quality that you can produce as a seller. And you roll the dice again to get your delivery as a seller, as a producer. Okay, what's on the rest of this? Well, if we look down here in this section, we also have this production max. Now, as a seller, you can produce your product, right? And remember, we did talk about your mod units. That is, how many units are you targeting to produce? If you make less than those, if you sell less than your mod units, that's not good. If you sell your mod units, that's better. If you sell more than your mod units, is that good or bad? Well, that depends on the deal you get. If you can get a good deal, that is, you can sell them at a high price, then you make more money, won't you? So. This is somewhat limited by your capacity to produce more. This is why we have production maximum. So what is production maximum? Production maximum is the maximum you can produce is equal to your mod units. You cannot produce more unless you spend your flex points. So if you spend your flex points, you can actually produce more. How much more? If you spend one flex point, then you will produce 10% more than your mod units. So you can do it, but it's gonna cost you. How much is it gonna cost you? One flex point for 10% increase in your mod unit production. 
Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, that's basically all we need to know to start to play the game. And over here we have a quick view area which kind of summarizes everything we just talked about. As a seller, you have your sell minimum, that is the minimum you need to sell. Those are your mod units. That's already been put in here automatically. You have your minimum price. Remember, this is your resistance. You have your maximum quality and you have your maximum delivery. That depends on the dice you roll and then you need to click the radio button. Okay, you also have over here is your inventory sold. So this will be when the game is all done, how much did you sell? And if you look here closely, you can see what this means. Your total sold divided by your sell minimum. So if you sell more than your minimum, that is your mod units, if you sell more, then this number will equal one. It can only equal one. You can't go higher than one, but you can go under one. How do you go under one? If your total sold is less than your minimum that you should sell, your mod units, then this will become less than one. But it can never be more than one. This is important for later when we do our scoring, you shall, you shall see. While we're playing the game then, we also can use this piece here, this little square. And what is this? This is very useful. This is going to be your weighted average price. So this is to find out when you sold, what did you sell for? You do not have to sell all of your products to one group. You can sell some to one group and some to another group. You can sell 100 to group one, you can sell 100 to group two, and you can sell 1,000 to group three. You can divide up your order, the order of the sales to any amounts you want to any different groups. But we need to keep track of what price did you get. And how do we do that? We do that with a, with a weighted average price. So what you do here is on this section here, you go ahead and you indicate who did you actually sell to. So this right here, you click there and you'll get a drop down menu with the group numbers. So what group did you sell to? And then over here, you're going to put in the price. What price did you sell for? And how many did you sell? And this will equal your weighted average price so far. And you do this for every time you make a sale. You can sell to the same group at different prices. In other words, you could sell 1,000 units at $1,000 and then 500 units at $1,100 to the same group. You just need to make sure you record your sales here. And so what we have are, who did you sell to? What price did they pay? And what was the quantity they purchased? And what this does is it adds up our total at the end, as we can see here, to be the weighted average price because it will be the average, or it will be the, the total of the quantity and the total of the uh, prices divided by, in this case, B divided by A, which will give us what was the average price, but not just average, but at a weighted average. If you sold more at a higher price, then your weighted average price would be higher. If you sold less at a higher price, then your weighted average price would go to the lower end. So this gives us a nice measure. Overall, what was your price? What price did you sell for? Okay, so, so far so good, right? Let me just quickly review what we've done so far. We roll the dice to find out what is our position and then what is our goal package, right? Because we find out here, how important is it? How many do I have to sell? And what price do I have to sell at? What kind of quality can I produce? And what kind of delivery can I offer? If I want to produce more because I can make more money, then I have to spend flex points. Where did my flex points come from? They came from rolling the one to six dice up here. So the maximum you have is six, the minimum you have is one. 
I go ahead and I can quickly see a quick view. How many do I have to sell? What's the price I need to sell at or above? I'm the seller. I would like to get the price higher. What's my quality and what's my delivery? And then here I record each deal. Who did I sell to? What price did I sell at? And how many did I sell? That will give me a weighted average price. And then over here I have my inventory. Overall, how many did I sell? So this is after the game is all over. I add this up. How many did I sell? If I sold everything, then I have one. If I sold more than everything because I could make more money, that's great, but that's still just one. If I sold less, if I sold half of what I was required to sell, then this number would be 0 0.5. Now then we come down to this bit of a larger uh, picture here, a little bit larger chart. Let me zoom out and I'm going to have to scroll down. And zoom back in. Okay, what I want you to do to, to do right now is pay attention to this text here. Going lower gains flex points. Going higher spends flex points. What does that mean? Well, remember I'm the seller, right? So if I want to sell a product to one of the groups, so here we can go ahead and we can list the group. Just click on there, there'll be a drop down menu. What group am I selling to? Maybe my quality is low, but that group needs medium. Can I sell medium quality? Well, it's not easy, it's hard because my factory is producing low. How can I sell medium? I have to work extra hard. How can I do that? I can take my flex points and spend them. Up here we can see how many flex points I have right now. I have three, so I can spend three flex points. Now what I can do is, I can raise the quality. I can raise the quality of my product by spending flex points. If I take one flex point, I can raise 100 units of product one level. So I can go from low to medium for 100 units. So I can increase my quality by spending one flex point for 100 units. What if I want to sell 200 units? Maybe I have a buyer and the buyer wants to buy 200 units from me, but he needs medium quality. I don't have medium quality. I only have low quality. What can I do? I can take two flex points, so I can type two here, and I can increase the quality of 200 units. Of course, I will lose my flex points. So that's what it means here by saying Whoops, where are we right over here? Here we go. Going lower gains flex points, going higher spends flex points. I'm the seller. My product is normally low quality. I want to sell it at medium quality, 100 units. I need to spend one flex points to get my quality up, 100 units up, one level. I can sell 100 units at high. How do I do that? I need to spend two flex points because I need 100 units to go up from low to medium, that's one point, and then medium to high, that's one more point. The opposite is also true. If my company produces at high quality, but the buyer is looking for medium quality, then that means I can actually sell my high quality for medium. That is one level lower. And in that case, I'm going to be going lower. Going lower gains flex points. So if I sell 100 units and my quality is normally high, but the buyer, I convince him to buy medium, and he buys 100 units, what happens? Right here, I gain three points. 
uh, one point, I'm sorry, I gain one point. If, I, if he goes down to low quality, I gain two points. If he buys 200 at medium, then I gain one point for 100 and one point for the next 100, and I'm going down one level, so I gain two points. Let's go ahead and fill that out here. It's a little bit hard to see when it's so zoomed out, but let's say that I'm going to gain points. When I gain points, I simply type in the points I'm gaining, for example, two, and press enter, and that will go ahead and add flex points. You see what I've done here? I typed two, and now I have gained two. I had three, now I have five. Let's say that I'm gonna lose points. What do I do? I need to come in here and type minus one, because I lost one, maybe. Now let's zoom in and take a look at that. Now you see how many flex points do I have? I now have four flex points because I have gained two but lost one. How do you gain and lose? Remember, going lower gains flex points, going higher spends flex points. It's up to you to correct, correctly input this information. You can also choose the group you're dealing with. So over here you need to use your drop down menu and you need to choose which group am I selling to? Which group is actually buying from me? And then how many points did I gain and how many points did I lose? And remember, this is per 100 units. So you can divide the sale up into different parts and sell them at different quality levels. The exact same thing can be done for the delivery. So if we look at delivery, exact same case. Maybe your delivery is slow, low. So how do you get it up to medium? Well, you need to spend one flex point to get 100 units up to medium. The same is true if you gain flex points. Maybe your delivery speed is fast, high, and the buyer, he'll accept medium. Well, that's great. What do you do? Well, you can go ahead and sell them 100 at the slower speed and you'll gain a flex point. If they buy 200, you gain two points. If they buy 300, you gain three points. If they get 400, you gain four points. So for every 100 that you go under, you go ahead and gain a flex point. Now, because you're the seller, you also have to worry about your production. Now, you may be able to find a really good opportunity. That means maybe you found someone, another group, who wants to buy more of your product, but you already sold it all. Maybe they're giving you a really good price, or maybe they're giving you the price you want, but they're accepting a lower quality or a lower delivery speed, so you will gain flex points. Isn't that great? How can you sell more? Well, you can sell more by spending flex points. And again, the same idea. What group are you selling to? And then how many points are you spending? One point is a 10% increase on your production limit. Remember, you rolled the dice for your base units, then you had mod units. So let's say that your mod units are 1,000. You can spend one point to produce 100 more because your mod units is 1,000. This affects your mod units, not your base. Let's say that you want to produce even more. So you can spend another flex point. How many more will you produce? Another 100. It's always 10% of the mod units. 10%. You cannot just keep increasing that percentage. It's not 1,000 plus 1,100. Or not 1,000 plus 100, 1,100, and then you can produce 11. No, no, no. If you have 1,000 mod units, you spend one flex point to produce 100 more. And then you spend another one point to, spend, to make 100 more, and then another one to make 100 more, and then another point to make 100 more. It's fixed at that base. Okay, so what do we have so far here then? What we have is our beginning points, and then our production quality, our delivery, our maximum production, weighted average, and then group by group we write down here 
do we gain flex points or lose flex points? If you, if you have a buyer and they want to buy medium and you sell medium, then you don't gain a flex point and you don't lose a flex point. And then to end it all up, what do we do lastly? Lastly, lastly we come down here to the final formula. Now you can see here my formula has some divide by zero. Why? Because I haven't completed the game. Let me go ahead and just fill in a little bit up here so I can pretend that I've played the game. So I need to sell some, right? So what do I do? Who do I sell to? Let's say I sell to group four. And let's say I sell for the price of, let me see, what was my actual resistance? My resistance was 960. Let's go ahead and say I get a not good price. Let's say I sell it for 800. And then let's say my quantity is 1,000 units. I just sell everything to the same group. Okay, now I've got some numbers have come through. I don't think I've done a very good job here. But anyway, that'll give you, give you a, good, a good chance to see an example of adding up the score. Remember, you can sell a little bit to some groups, a little bit to other groups. You can sell everything to one group. It's any way you want to do it. Okay, so what we end up here is the weighted average price, which remember I sold everything to one group at 100, so my weighted average price, uh, 800, my weighted average price is just 800, that's it. My resistance price was 960, this is not good, that means that I actually sold less than my resistance, that is not good. So I end up here with a score of so far of minus 160. We divide that by the resistance price, which was 960, and I end up with a fraction of minus 0 0.17, which is the same thing as, you know, just minusing it out. We times it by 100 to get back to a uh, number over 0, and I end up with uh, over 0 on the negative side, 16.67. And then, how many flex points do I have? More flex points is better. If you spend your flex points, you need to think, what are you getting for that? If you spend it to produce more because you have a good price, is that going to be worth more than keeping your flex points? You really, really need to make a plan and think about things. You need to discuss this with your group. I have four flex points because I didn't spend any. I also did not make any. So, so far then, we take this score, which is based on my price, plus the flex points, and I end up with minus 1267. So you see I took down the minus a little bit. Next is the importance. That's very big here because that is times the importance. So if this negotiation is very important, then this is going to make my score go way up. If it is not important, it's going to make it go way down. In this case, it's actually going to do the opposite. If my importance is very high because I did a bad job in negotiating, it's going to really hurt me. So in other words, whatever you do, this multiplies it vastly. If it was very important and you did a bad job, you're going to get a very bad score. I'm going to end up in some negative territory here because I got a bad price. I broke through my resistance point and I think my boss is going to fire me for it. Okay, that equals 38, minus 38. And then I look at the inventory sold. I did not sell all my inventory. Again, bad. That is not good. And that's going to give me a score here which is going to be minus 3.65 and that is my final score. I end up with a minus 3.65. That's a very bad score. Now I can tell you that when my students play this game usually it ends up that uh, students who have done okay uh, they may have scores like 10 or 5 or 6 and students that have done very well have scores like 60, 80, 300 sometimes, something like this. The difference between a good negotiation and a poor negotiation is highly dependent on how important is that negotiation. You can see my final score appears up in the top over here. So this is my final score. Obviously I've done a very bad job. All right, so that is the seller and I think it's a little bit confusing but if you download the Excel and start fooling around with it a little bit you'll get the idea very very quickly 
especially if you look down here at the final formula. I think you'll understand it very quickly by looking there because you can easily see what's going on. All right, and we have some warnings down here. As you input your numbers, some text will come out here and tell you what's happening. So let me, uh, well, I'll just let you fool around with that. I think that would be the best thing. So pay attention down here. If you get any kind of messages telling you you've done something wrong, please pay attention. Let's go ahead and jump over then to the buyer. Okay, so we've got the buyer. Basically the same thing. We're gonna start out with the base price, which I give you in the email, and the base units. You roll the dice, and then that will change to be your resistance price and your mod units. That means since you are now the buyer, that means your resistance price, what's the maximum you will pay, and also what's the mod units, the maximum you will buy. You also have flex points, which could be one to six flex points. Okay, so far so good, same thing, right? Importance, exactly the same. This could be very important or not important at all. If it's very important, it's gonna affect your score a lot, so you need to really think about negotiating hard. If it's not going to be so important, maybe you should emphasize building a relationship with other teams, with other groups. Here's your final score, which we don't have anything because we've done nothing yet. And then we come down to the same thing again. Your quality, this is the quality you're buying, right? And this is the quality of the delivery into your channel. So you may require, as a buyer, to have high quality. That means I'm going to buy high quality because my customers need high quality. You're called the buyer, but actually this game is all B2B. So you're buying it and then you're going to sell it. So your customers may demand high quality, in which case if they demand high quality, what are you gonna do? You've gotta give them high quality, right? What is high quality? If you roll a five or a six, that is high. Please remember, the dice roll is here, right? One to two, right there. One, two, two. Three, two, four. And five to six. Okay, please don't get confused by one, two, three. One, two, three are the levels, right? So dice roll one to two is low. Three to four is average. Five to six is high. And the same thing is true for the delivery. So we have the delivery again. This is the delivery that has to do with your channel. So if you're going to require fast delivery, that means your customers need a fast response time. So if your manufacturer does not give you fast, you cannot satisfy your customers. You need fast. If you don't get fast, then you have to get some kind of compensation in price, some way to get something that makes you happy because you're going to lose something if you don't get your requirement. Again, we have the weighted average price and this time you are the buyer. So you again indicate who did you buy from who did you buy from? Put your group there, drop down menu should do that okay for you. What was the price you paid? And you do not have to buy everything from one group. You can buy a little bit from one group, a little bit from another group. You can buy from the same group twice or three times using different prices. But each time you buy, you need to input this. And then over here, you'll get the weighted average price for each one. The weight, not the weighted average, but the weight. And then down at the bottom, you'll be able to see the total weighted average price when it comes out. Over here is your quick view, so you can very quickly show your teammates what is your secret information. You can share it with your teammates. Please don't share this with other teams because then they'll see your secret information. You have your buy minimum and your buy maximum. Now that's something that's a little bit different from the seller. The seller, remember, they had a target to produce, but they could produce more. How do they produce more? By spending their flex points. But if you're the buyer, you do not have that option. Your boss has told you, you have a minimum to buy. You need to buy that much. 
or what's the maximum you can buy because maybe you get a good deal right if you get a product at a really good price wouldn't you like to buy a little bit more well yes you can do that but that's also determined by a dice roll so this is the one thing that's different between the buyer and the seller the one thing that's different is this purchase maximum the purchase maximum is also rolling the six-sided dice if you rolled one to two you could buy a maximum up to 10% more, 1.1. If you roll three to four, then you could buy a maximum of 20% more. If you buy, if you roll five to six, you can buy 30% more. Now, if we look at this closely here, what does this actually mean? That I rolled five to six, so my mod units can be 1.3. This means I can buy my mod units, which let's say it's 1,000. I can buy 1,000 units and I can buy more. I could buy 1.3 more, which would be 1,300 units if I want to. Why would I want to do that? Because as a buyer, I got a really good price or I got a really good delivery. I got something really, really good. So I want to buy more of it now. Do I have to buy more? No, I could just buy the minimum required. That is my mod units. I could just buy mod units. Where are my mod units? Remember, my mod units are up here, right? Mod units. I have to buy mod units. Can I buy more? Yes, it is possible to buy more. Okay, so here is my buy minimum, which is my mod units. My buy maximum, which I just rolled the dice for. My resistance maximum price the mod price right the resistance and my min quali quality and my min delivery now down here we have the exact same setup only it's reversed so let me go ahead and scroll down a little bit and zoom into the most important thing you need to keep in your brain while you're doing this and that is this English here Going higher gains flex points. Going lower spends flex points. This is exactly the opposite of the seller. So in this case, if you go higher, that means let's say your delivery is low. That means you can accept low or slow delivery. That's okay for you. But let's say there's a seller and they can give you medium. Well, that's even better, isn't it? Wouldn't you like to take that? Yes, you can do that. And if you do that, what do you get? For every 100 units that you buy that are above what you needed, one level, you do what? You gain a flex point. And so over here, just like we talked about, in this case, we're talking about delivery. You choose which group did you buy from? And for 100 units, you get one point. If it's two points, then that would be 200 units you got. You can also go up two levels. If you want to go up two levels for 100 units, you need to spend two flex points. Okay, so again, going higher gains flex points. What if you go lower? That means you're required to get, let's say, fast delivery, high. But the person selling to you, that company can only give you medium. Well, can you accept that? If you have flex points, you have some flexibility. So yes, you can accept it, but it's gonna cost you. What does it cost? One flex point per 100 units. You must type the negative one in there. All right, I think we get the idea. Exactly the same on both sides, just opposite direction. Then lastly, we're going to come down to The scoring which is done in the exact same way so again just pay attention to that check it out <clears throat> I don't think it will be hard for you once you look at the mathematical side of it it's very mathematical you see sometimes there's a message here for example see this message flex points are under zero you must have at least zero flex points so pay attention as you add up your score messages can pop out you see that message there that's warning you of something right down there that you've done something wrong. So pay attention to those messages. 
So all of these scores you cannot change. This will come because you changed the things above. And again, resistance minus weighted average divided by resistance equals something times 100 and to get it out of the small fraction. And then your flex points, very, very important. And then the most important thing is times importance and this will equal your score which will then times your inventory bought. If you go over your inventory bought, uh, you will not gain anything here. The maximum is one. But because maybe you got a good deal, you bought more. You use your flex points to buy more, maybe. Uh, well, actually, in this case, no. What happens is you, got, you bought more because you're allowed to buy more. You don't have to buy more. But if you got a good deal, a good price, you made more money. That's possible. But in any case, inventory bought the maximum is one, and then you'll get a score. There's no score here now because I haven't clicked out all of these numbers up top. Okay, so that's the way the score sheet works. A little bit confusing, and I think if you watch this video, you're like, oh boy, overload, I can't take it. Watch the video, but then open up the Excel, click it a little bit, and most important, talk with your group members. I think if you have two or three people together, you begin to get the idea. We're going to roll dice, six-sided dice, right? So in the game, we're gonna to go to a Google Sheet and there's a six-sided dice. In the meantime, you can just use a dice to practice or you can go to a website that rolls one to six random number. Just one to six randomly. That's all you need. And you can practice a little bit and see how it works. I give you the product. You cannot choose any product. And I also give you the price, which is the price before modification, before mod. And I also give you the units, which we call base price and base units. They will be changed after you roll the dice, but you cannot make it up. We begin with one product only. You must buy one and sell one. It's always the same. And later, as we get more practice, I'm going to give you more than one product. But you need to choose which one you buy or choose which one you sell. Finally, the last thing I want to remind you of is a really fun thing. And that is, also random is, who is a buyer and who is a seller. That is also random, decided by a six-sided dice. So random one to six decides. One to three, I think, are buyers and four to six are sellers. So this is totally random. That means each time we negotiate, there could be more buyers than sellers or more sellers than buyers, or it could be exactly equal although it's very unusual to be totally equal. What does this mean for you as a negotiator? This means that if there's many sellers but not many buyers, as a seller you need to find the buyers quickly. And the opposite is also true. So this means you have a time pressure. You don't want to wait too long because if you wait, the other teams have already taken up all the opportunities. They maybe did not even get very good deals, but they got there first. On the other hand, you don't want to make a deal quickly as soon as you meet your first other group because there may be a better deal with another group. Also, if you are the seller and maybe there's just two sellers, that means many buyers will be looking for your sellers. So you would take your time because you have something everybody wants. If your position is strong, that means maybe you produce high quality and you produce quickly, then you have a strong position. You may want to take your time, check out different buyers. On the other hand, as a seller, if your position is weak, your quality is low, your delivery time is slow, you may want to get a deal quickly before the buyers can find better opportunities. And the same is true of the other side if you're a buyer. So what I'm trying to say is it's hard. You don't want to be too slow, but you don't want to be too fast. If you're too fast, you may make a deal and lose a good opportunity. On the other hand, if you start out in a weak position, you may wait and get nothing. It's actually possible that you wait and there's no more people left to negotiate with. There's no more teams. You may have a product to sell and nobody is left to buy it because they've already bought everything they can buy. 
Remember, there are maximums to what you can produce and maximums to what you can buy. Also, it's possible that other groups just make better deals. They convince the other sides easier. They convince them better. And you, you are busy trying to do something complicated or maybe trying to be honest or maybe trying to do win-win. I don't know. But you lost your opportunity because other teams convinced the buyers or convinced the sellers that they had a good deal. So the conclusion is it's complicated. And you really need to use all of the things we talked about so far in this class. And added on to that is we're going to be negotiating inside of the virtual world. Now this is not actually so unusual. Many companies today do use electronic communication to do their negotiation to save time to save trouble. And having the virtual world actually makes us feel that we're present, that we're there. And the other thing is you can see the groups on this in their offices on this island we have and you can go visit them and remember you can talk to someone when you're close to them and when you're far away from them they can't hear you so it's very much like a real situation you can pick and choose maybe you need to get your group together understand your goal package make your strategy think of your tactics get your resistance price clear get your target price clear get your resistance point clear and then send your people out maybe send out three people to three different groups, not together one by one, because that would take too long. Or if you're in a strong position, you just wait. And then you wait until all the different groups come to see you, and then you try to decide how can you maximize your situation. Maybe you want to use distributive bargaining. I think that's most normal. Maybe you want to try to use integrative. Maybe this negotiation is not important, but you want to emphasize relationships. So maybe you can help another group this time, and then next time you'll get something. I don't know, it's all possible, right? So there's many complexities to this game. The score sheet reflects that a little bit, but I think if you sit down, maybe spend 30 minutes or one hour looking at this, fooling around with it, you'll quickly see it's not that hard. There's not that many parameters. The biggest complexity doesn't come from the scoring sheet. The biggest complexity comes from what are you doing with the other groups because it's so dynamic. So good luck with your negotiation and we'll take this step by step. See you in class in the virtual space.